Maggie Butt, and I'm kicking off a new series of mini vlogs. Um, hopefully just something to keep my creative juices flowing while I'm a little stressed out from a little bit of lack of gaming. I've been gaming less than ever before and a little bit more of work stress. So uh, I figured we'd start just asking my friends questions and answering them as I go. If you have any particular gaming questions you'd like to ask, you can leave them in the comments. You can tell me on Facebook or Twitter, or you can do whatever you like. You can vlog them and then ask me in your vlog, and I will watch your vlog, I'll comment on that vlog, then I'll make my own vlog. That sounds really complicated, but I would do it. So, um, I have been consuming a lot more media lately, a lot more reviews and videos and those types of things. So if you do any kind of video review, not um, instructional, but review, uh, please link it below. I am more than happy to watch and give feedback and comment. So um, it's something I really enjoy doing. Uh, so my first uh, question that came up was from Andy Jewett, who, um, he is a graphic designer and artist himself. He's got some new games coming up. He's got this really cool little, like, firefighter climbing game coming up. He also did the graphic design for Zooscape from Tasty Minstrel, and this was his kind of first name on a game, so I'm really excited for Andy. Um, if you haven't played Zooscape, because it's not out yet, uh, I highly recommend it. I should be doing some sort of overview after a few more plays, but it's just a snappy, smart little, I cut you choose, yeah, play it. Um, but what he asked was recognizing the it factor in a game. So what does that mean first? Um, generally speaking, I, I think there's two ways to go about this question. Um, is that before a game is published or is it after a game is published? Because before a game is published, you go through a lot of playtesting. Um, there are stages of playtesting. You get kind of a rough idea, and you try and work it out. You make sure that the core mechanism is working. And then you start editing away, like, too much fluff, get rid of this card set, and trying to distill the game down as much as possible. Because even though there are some really beautifully made, overblown games after some million different mechanisms, most games do best once they get down to their core brilliance, right? You have to have a little bit of something different, and it has to be obvious. So for me, an it factor in playtesting is having some mechanism, some part of the game that's got enough of a twist to make it different than the other thousands of titles that are available. And that's somewhat true with a published game as well, but with prototypes especially, you really want to be able to identify, oh, the way that we did the, like, Onitama is a good example of this, the, um, the way that you have five cards out, and each turn you can use one of the two you have available, and you're going to give that over to the middle and give your opponent access to it later on. It's a really nice twist on hand management. So if you were playtesting something like Anitama, you would have to identify that card mechanism as being the thing about that game that's going to make that game work. And so once you get into published games, it's about can you recognize that it factor that they found through all the other fluff. You can ignore the theme, the story, the components, everything else. Can you narrow down what that one thing was that made the game work? Um, my my new uh, example of this would be Anachrony from Mind Clash Games, where the game is so overblown. It has a million things going on. It's got a lot of fluff and theme and minis and bits and art, but the time travel round management is really the thing that they clamped onto that is really smartly done. And so I think if I were to say any one game, you can usually identify the, the, the piece of that game that's going to make it worth your while. So when you think of Power Grid, think of that turn order thing where you don't want to be doing well during the game, you want to do well at the end of the game, so you have to find ways of not jumping ahead in points too early, and that's super special and wonderful. Um, just, it, there's so many, so many games that come out, and you're just like, well, this is a worse version of X or Y or Z, and I think they didn't distill down enough to make sure they had something truly special. 
Uh, so it factor for me, um, especially because I'm mechanism driven is always going to be mechanisms, um, for people who really enjoy theme and world building. That's another story. And I don't know that it, I would be the one to speak of an it factor for that, but the, the couple of games I can think of that have an it factor theme for me was something like Legends of Andor, where the story unfolds as you play. So there are similar games like Tales of the Radiant Knights and Above and Below, but truly Legends of Andor, you don't even know what your objective is. It's co-op, it's really difficult, there's a big map, but you don't actually know how you'll win until you've revealed it through a story. And I thought that that was pretty darn clever. And there are times where the it factor doesn't do enough for the game to save it. Um, so there was a deck builder a couple years back called Nightfall, and um, it was a pretty typical deck builder where each round you have a buy, you have a thing, and then, then you're going to take your monsters and try and attack other people's monsters. But the, the, the it factor to it was this chaining mechanism where when you bought your cards, certain colors, uh, like this card could be chained with a yellow and a red, and the yellow and the red card, or the red card would be able to chain with a red and a blue, and you'd be able to chain your deck together. So you were deck building into these long chains of actions. It was interesting, um, but it wasn't enough to save the game from the downtime, the wonky combat mechanisms, the high luck factor. There was just a lot going against the game, but the core mechanism really had something special to it, especially so early on in deck builders that you didn't have the things like Star Realms and other other games that have made better use of deck building right now. So really then you all just had... Uh, Thunderstone, Ascension, Dominion, and I think Marvel Legendary was right around that time, but I'm not positive. I think it was a little bit after. Um, but I, I think it factor is really important, and it's hard to define, and that is one of the most important parts about playtesting, more so than balance or other types of things, which I think most game designers can at least look somewhat objectively at balance and scoring and those types of things. It's hard to identify why a game is fun or not fun. And so usually using playtesters to determine that is important. Uh, that's all for me for now. And I will hope to see you next time. If you have any questions or you'd like to see future vlogs with something you'd like to know, please leave it down in the comments below and I will add it to the queue.